Okay, so we have a machloket amoraim between Abaye and Rav Chista on the one hand, and Rava on the other hand, regarding whether Omer Mutar, what does that mean? Somebody thinks that something is, they, they know what they're doing, but they think that it's permitted, they don't realize it's forbidden. Is that closer to Ones, meaning you thought it was, you thought it was permitted, therefore you did it, um, what, what you know? What uh, what blame can a person have? Or do we say no that it's karov lemezid? Karov lemezid means that you knew what you were doing and you did it. I you thought it was permitted. Well, you should have known better. You should have learned and you should have known that it wasn't. So that is the machloket we have between um, Abaye on the one hand, Abaye together with Rav Chista, who say that it is considered anus, and Rava who says that it is considered uh, karov lemezid. So now each one tries to bring a proof from the story in Tanakh, the story in Sefer Breshit regarding Avimelech. Avimelech and Sarah Amen, right? Remember the story, Avram goes down, um, um, Avimelech takes Sarah, he asks Abraham who she is, Avram says she is my sister, he doesn't want to be killed by saying that she's his wife, and therefore Avimelech takes her, he then has a dream, right? And he says, and Hashem says to him in the dream, who are you, what are you doing? This is a married woman, and this would be forbidden for you to do anything with her. And based on that conversation, the Gemara tries to bring a proof. So Avimelech was no mer mutar. He thought that she was not married. He thought, therefore, that this would be uh, permitted to him. So, so we're on the Gemara, four lines from the bottom. Sorry, five lines from the bottom. The last line of the narrow lines says like this. It ve rava le ravchista. Right, so Rava, who's the one who says that that uh, Omer Mutar is more is closer to Mezid, he says uh, the following. He says from the pasuk it says, uh, the, the, the the pasuk says that Avimelech is told you're going to die. You are you are chayev uh, meta over for the fact that you took that you took this woman. So my love be the Adam. Surely when it says in that means your chayev mita bide adam. In other words, that it would be uh, that's considered like mazid. The rabbi says, answers back of Christa lo bide shamayim. He says, no, when it says in chamet, it means uh, bide shamayim does not mean kapul bide adam. And therefore, we could still consider this to be like a case of honest. And he says, furthermore, I'll give you a proof that it's talking about bide shamayim and not bide adam. He says, dai kanami, we have a deal from the pasuk itself. It says, mechato li, right? You're being saved from, from sinning to me. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is speaking. So, so uh, that's an indication that it is a sin that is just Bidei Shemaim and not, not Bidei Adam. So answers back, answers back, Rabbi. He says, no, Veletamech says the fact that it says Mechato Li, that is not a proof that it's just Bidei uh, Shemaim. It could still be Bidei Adam. Why? Because you know by Yosef in Eshet Potiphar, it says, V'chatati le'elokim. Are you going to tell me that when it says, V'chatati le'elokim, it means, Le'elokim v'lo le'adam? Right? It says, and it says, Rashi Avihah, lo yodea she eshed ish. He knew that she, was a, that she was a married woman. Therefore, the fact that it says in the Pasuk, V'chato li, V'chatati le'elokim, that's not a proof. El adino masu le'adam. Yes, you're sitting um, between, uh, between Ben Adam and Makom, you're sitting, sitting towards Hashem, but dino masu le'adam, that the judgment is given over to bait him to execute. Ha'chanami dino masu le'adam. And therefore it is not a, uh, um, it's not a proof yet either. So that was Rava challenging, challenging Rav Chista. We now have a proof the, op the opposite way, again from the same Pasuk. But from the same story, it says now Hve Abaye Le Rava. Right? Abaye and Rav Chista here hold the same thing that Omer Mutar is Anus. Now Abaye is challenging Rava. He says, I'll bring you a proof from these Psukim that Omer Mutar is actually considered Anus and it's not considered Kroblamazid. How so? He says the Pasuk says Agoy Gam Tzadik Taharog. Okay, and, and again, this is still continuing on with the story of Avimelech. Avimelech says to Hashem, in his dream, he says, Avimelech lo karav eleha, v'yomar Hashem ha'goy gam tzadik taharog. Are you going to kill uh, somebody who is, uh, who is innocent? Says Rashi, kasal kadatach. So at this point, we understand, we would have thought, shehodalo ha'kadosh baruch hu. That Hashem accept, that, that argument was accepted. Hashem accepts that claim when he says, you can't kill me, I'm, I'm innocent. 
So Alma Anosu, that that seems to be uh, agreeing that he is that he is Anos. So answers back. So, so, so that is Abaye's proof to Rafa. Rafa answers back, no. He says Hashem does not accept the argument. He says, hadre He says, there he answers him back. Um, says Rashi, okay, did not accept his words, that he answered him back a, a, an answer, that actually, no, he was, he, he would have been because he was not a tzadik, he was not innocent. He should have learned, he should have understood, as we're going to now explain. So what was the answer, what was the answer which Hashem gave back? He said, um, he says, Very, very strange person. Hashem says to Avimelech, he says, return Sarah back to her husband, return the woman back, she is married, because he is a Navi. Give her, take her back to Abraham because he is a Navi. So says, says the Gemara, the obvious question over the over the Amud. It says, so what? Because he's a Navi, then his wife has to go back. But if he was not a Navi, he would not have to return her. Then it would be okay. What do you mean, uh, ki Navi? What, 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 what is that? What is that coming to add? So the answer is ki damar of Shmuel ba Nachmani, damar of Shmuel ba Nachmani, amar Rabbi Yonatan Hachi. Rabbi Shmuel ba Nachmani says the following limud in the name of Rabbi Yonatan. Says Hachi Kamani. This is what Hashem was saying. This is how you read the pasuk. Ata Hashem v'eshet ha'ish mikol makom. You need to give her back. You need to release Sarah and send her back to her family. In any event, whoever she is, irrespective of who the husband was. Now, you said, he has, he has the answer to your claim. You said, how could you be Chayv Mita? You are innocent. You didn't know that she was married. You're a, 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 you see yourself as a Tzadik, right? Because she, he said, she's my sister. She's not married. So, uh, etc. The answer to that is Navihu. He is a Navi. In other words, and over here, the word Navi does not mean uh, necessarily a prophet, but the word Navi refers to somebody who is wise and discerning. We know, by the way, that is one of the that is one of the characteristics. Marna Darim uh, learns it out. Different qualities that are required in order for somebody to become a prophet. One of them is they have to be a Chacham. So, so. Um, the word Navi does not mean a prophet, somebody who can you know, has visions that can tell the future, right? But it means somebody who's wise and discerning. So see, Kadosh Baruch Hu says back to Avimelech the following. He says, give her back, whoever she is. The next part of the passage says, Ki navihu, that is an answer to your question, Avimelech. You said, I'm innocent because he told me she's a uh, sister. Answer, you're not innocent because he was a Navi, meaning he was wise and discerning. What do we mean? Because he learned from you. He learned from you to tell you that he was uh, that, that, that she was his sister. Don't say you're innocent because this is what Avram said. The reason Avram said that is because of what he learned from your behavior. How so? We say now Amasha. It says, right? A guest comes into comes to a city. So what do they uh, uh, what do they ask him about? I ask him, do you have a place to eat? Do you have a place to sleep? Right. That's uh, th those are normal questions that you ask a guest when they come when they come to a city. Right. If the first question I ask him is, oh, this woman who's with you, is she your wife or your sister? Right? Something's going on here. Right. If they're asking him such a question, he understands that there's going to be a that there's going to be a threat, and that that's why he said achotchai. So so from here we say, going back to our original sugya, that that Omer uh, we consider it as not as honest, but we consider it as they should have, as as somebody should have learned and should have been able to know better, but but they were unable to. So that concludes that that previous sugya. We now move on to our mishnah. Next mishnah on Daf Tet Amud Bet. We have two mishnayot on the Samud, and the first one says as follows: We're now going back. Going back to our main topic of Aramiklat, uh, we've been discussing the different cases of when somebody would go into the, uh, of when, uh, under which circumstance somebody would go into the Aramiklat, go into Galut for having accidentally killed. Um, and now we're discussing as well, continue on from the previous Mishnah, who is it 
that would go into the uh, in, into the Amikla. So we spoke about an Av and a Ben and a Ben and an Av, etc. Now the Mishnah says Hasuma, somebody who is blind. Oh. We have three opinions. Um, well, we're going to see two two different discussions in the Mishnah. One regarding a Suma, somebody who's blind, and one regarding a Sone, somebody who is an enemy of somebody else. There we're going to see three opinions. But regarding a Suma, someone who's blind, a Suma, a Nogole, says Tanakama, a blind person who accidentally killed would not go into Galut. The very Rabbi Yehuda, right? Tanakamiya is Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Meir Omer, Gole Hasun. Uh, Rabbi Meir Omer Gole. Rabbi Meir says no, he would go into Galut. So we have a machloket, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir, whether a Suma, a blind person who accidentally killed, would go into Galut or not. We'll see in the Gemara precisely what is behind their machloket. Uh, so case number two, Hasone, somebody who is an enemy. Of somebody else, he hates him. What is a soner? So based on the uh, based on the Gemara elsewhere, the Rambam writes that somebody who hasn't spoken to somebody else for three days because of enmity, that would be considered a soner. That's the uh, that's an enemy. So the soner says the Gemara says the Mishnah, Einogole does not go into Galut. Why would a soner not go into uh, not go into Galut because Galut is only for uh, an accidental killing, something which happened, but Shogeg, right? We're talking here about a case. If it was a case, but Mazid and it was premeditated and we have witnesses and we have Hatra'a uh, uh, and all of that. So then, of course, there is no Galut and there, there is there is a Mitat Beitin. But assuming that is not the case, it's a case where ordinarily we would have thought it's Shogeg, since there is um, this pre existing. Um, uh, you know, conflict bet between these people, there is room to believe that maybe this was not accidental. This is an enemy that he had, he was out to get it. And therefore, uh, he would not go into Galut. So first opinion is, for the Soneh, there is no, there is no Galut, ever. Second opinion, Rabbi Yossi Omer, neherag shehu kemuad. Okay, so just like in uh, the laws of Nazikin, we have a, we have a short time and a short mu'ad. Mu'ad means that it's you know predisposed to act in a certain way. So Rabbi Yossi is more stringent. He says that Sone is going to be killed. Not just that there is no, uh, not just that there is no um, no galut, but he's saying even without hatra'a, even without warning, which we normally require, um, the, the Sone, we assume that if he killed somebody, that is. Uh, that was uh, who's his enemy. That was done intentionally, and therefore he would be put to death for that. says Rashi, harago. In other words, it says if he's already been warned, if already he's had hatra'a, because we say that he's uh, that he's definitely wanted to wanted to kill him. That's how Rabbi Yossi understands. You'll remember, by the way, that this opinion of Rabbi Yossi we've seen already. We saw it earlier on, on Tafzayin, Tafzayin Amud Bet, at the beginning of the Masechet, uh, at the beginning of the Perak, um, we, we had a discussion over there, excuse me, in the previous Perak, in Daf, uh, Daf Vav Amud Bet, we had a discussion over there about Hatra'a. There was a there was a Machloket in the Mishnah in terms of who gives Hatra'a. There was an opinion of Rabbi Yossi, who said that the witnesses themselves have to be the ones who give Hatra'a, and uh, the Tanakama said, no, it could be anybody. And then we asked, there was a, there was a, uh, a contradiction based on the, from, from our Mishnah, because our Mishnah says that you don't actually need, need a Hatra. And uh, the, the Gemara over there said, no, there are two different Rabbi Yossi's. There's Rabbi Yossi and there is Rabbi Yossi Bar who, uh, who who doesn't require that. So, that is, so that's, our, uh, that, that's the second opinion. Opinion number one is that the Sunet, what's common to both these opinions of Tanakama and Rabbi Yossi is that there is no galut. There is no galut for a sonet. According to Tanakama, no galut, is, but there's no galut, but there's no uh, mita. According to Rabbi Yossi, um, he's killed. Third opinion is Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon Omer, yesh sonet gole, the yesh sonet she no gole. Right? He says there are situations where there will be galut, and there are situations where there won't be galut. In other words, Rabbi Shimon says that no, we, we recognize there is a difference with the sonet, this is not the ordinary case, but it has to be circumstantial as well. He says, here is the principle. Depending on the case, if we can say, if we have 
we have proof if it makes sense to say that it was it, it was done intentionally then i mean even though uh, for somebody else this might have this might have been a case of galut but we have more reason to to understand and to believe that the sonne killed intentionally then we would say there would not be galut however if it was not if it if it's uh, completely reasonable that or based on the evidence that this was completely accidental then they would still have uh, they would still have galut um right rashi rashi says yes sonesh no gole velone rag that was the first opinion that he does not go into galut and he's not killed either he says call call arigash yakhulin no mar arigazo shadadata you look at the evidence in any case where you can say this was done intentionally uh no gole le fisha khashudu akh we say there's a bit of suspicion over here and therefore the sonne is not going to go uh, not going to go into galut however shelo ladata rag in the other case, Shari Gazo Vadai Shalolat, Ain Adam Yacholoma Alea Ladat Haita Ita Kola the Gmama Falishla. So the Gmara will explain what the case is, but he's saying if there's a case whereby nobody could say this was done intentionally, where it's clear that it was completely accidental, then even though he's a sonet, he's going to go into uh go into Galut. That is the opinion of Rabbi Shimon. Okay, so those are the two dinim of our Mishnah, both the Suma, the blind person, Machloket, Rabbi Me and Rabbi Yudah, and the Sonet. Three-way machloket tanaim. So says the Gemara. First of all, regarding the suma, what is the source to say that somebody's blind would not go into galut? So Tan Rabbanan beloraot prat la suma. So we have a pasuk again. We're going back into these pasukim, which discuss we we dashed it already at the beginning of the parak. Many of these words in these pasukim. It says v'bochol even asher yamut ba beloraot where where. It would happen, a stone would fall on somebody and they would die, right? Beloraot, without seeing. So without seeing comes to exclude the Summa, the very Rabbi Yudha. That is how Rabbi Yudha learns. Why do we say without seeing, right? The Summa doesn't see. So why does that come to exclude? So the understanding is that, that where you have a case whereby over here, he didn't see it. Over here, it was an accident and something happened where the person would not see. There, they would go into Galut. But in a case where a person would never see, where the person ordinarily would not see because they're blind, there would not be, there would not be Galut. That is how, that is how Rabbi Yudha understands. Um, Rashi, this is how he explains, says, the mashma, kan lora'a avaro'eb makomacher. The limur is, over here, he did not see, but everywhere else, he would see. So Pratla Suma that excludes the Suma Shainora Ebushumakum because he can never see. Rabbi Meir Omer Beloraot Lerabotita Suma. So Rabbi Meir says no, Rabbi Meir learns the opposite. He says the fact that it says Beloraot can be even without seeing, that comes to include the Suma who doesn't see. Okay? And the Gemara is now going to, going to explain a little bit further what their machloket is based on. It says, "My time, Rabbi Yehuda. What, what, what is Rabbi Yehuda's reasoning here? Okay, so we're dashing out again from from uh, this is the pasuk which we've seen already many times. Asher somebody who comes into the forest uh, and there, right? Remember the case, chopping wood accidentally, the person dies. He says that Asher comes to include Afilu um, even uh, because anybody who can come into the uh, can come into the forest that includes the blind person, there's no reason he can't uh, can't be there. But then the pasuk says beloraot. It then says without seeing that comes to exclude him. So you have a he's included in the first place, but then beloraot specifically excludes the suma. So Rabbi Yoda says he does not go into galut. Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir learns differently. He says beloraot lemaet. Okay, this is the, the pasuk which we saw before in the in the same parsha. The Torah is talking about giving different examples and different uh, criteria for when the case of accidental killing would would lead to galut. So we say belora or to that seeing that excludes bivlidat also comes to exclude. And so says Rabbi Meir, have a miut achamiut ve'ein miut achamiut ela lerabot. Something which may be a little bit counterintuitive, but this is one of the rules of exposition from the Psukim, that whenever we have a, a, a two exclusions, one after the other, 
which come to exclude the same thing, right? What, that actually comes to teach you the opposite, paradoxically. Because if the Torah had already excluded it, and then it excludes it again, it's coming to teach you that there is something different. And therefore, therefore, uh, it's actually, uh, we actually include it as the general principle. So he says, you have Laura Ott, uh, somebody can't see, with Lidat, somebody doesn't know. Both of those, uh, why is that written twice? To tell you that actually we would include it. Have miot, 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 ela le rabot. So now, says the Gemara, again, whenever we have we, we have a machloket like this, in terms of exposition of the psukim, so everybody has the same psukim. So what does Rabbi Yehuda do with the fact that you have miot achamiot? So it says, Rabbi Yehuda, bivli dat, prat le mitkavenu data. No, Rabbi Yudah does not hold this is a miut achamiut because he holds the two psukim are coming to exclude different things. He says, below reot comes to exclude the summa. Bivlidat comes to exclude pratla mitkaven, somebody who, who intended, right? What, obviously, killing is a, we're dealing with shogeg. Why do we need a pasuk pratla mitkaven? So we saw this already earlier on in the beginning of the, of the parak. Pratla mitkaven, it says a person thought it was an, he thought he was killing an animal. And he's actually killing a person. That uh, that is the case, which is excluded over there. So, so therefore, the, there is no miyot hamiyot for Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda learns the suma is excluded. Rabbi Meir learns that the suma is uh, is included. Toss for Rabbi Yehuda asks a question. Wait a minute. Rabbi Yehuda says here bivlidat refers to mitkaven. We already saw that in the Gemara. We saw that in a brighter. How come Rabbi Meir comes along now and says uh, says uh, differently? Um, so it says, or, or, or where would Rabbi Meir learn from this, this idea of Pratla Mitkaven? So it says Tosfot, Rabbi Yudar, who Aumi Bali Pratla Mitkaven, the Rabbi Meir Savar Pratla Mitkaven, Vahule, Shamina Mishkaga, Vitalte Shmamina. So he says, Rabbi Meir learns it. It says the word Shkaga twice in the Psukim. From the fact that it says Shkaga an extra time, he learns there Prat the Mitkaven, the stain which Rabbi Yudah learns um, over here. Vai the brighter than El Ajak Rabbi Yudah, and we have the brighter earlier on that says Bivlidat is Prat the Mitkaven. That is going according to the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda. All right, next next halacha. So we now have the din of the Sone. We saw three opinions regarding the Sone. According to Tanakama, never goes into Galut. Uh, according to Rabbi Yossi, not only does he not go into Galut, but he's killed. And according to Rabbi Shimon, depends on the circumstance. So Rabbi Yossi Omer Asonene Rag Vechule asks the Gemara, "Vahalo Atrobe?" They didn't uh, warn him. There was no, there was no hatra'a. Uh, so answers the Gemara again the same answer which the Gemara gave earlier on. On Dafvav Amudbet, when we saw this contradiction in the opinion of Rabbi Yossi himself, because Rabbi Yossi in an earlier Mishnah says there has to be atra'a, not just there has to be atra'a, there has to be atra'a from the witnesses. He said if anybody else gives atra'a, it doesn't count. And over here he says you don't need atra'a at all. So answers the Gemara. Matnitin Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehudai. This is the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda. There are a number of different Rabbi Yossis. And what does Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda say? He says the Tanya Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda Omer Chaver Eino Tzarech Hatraa Lefi Shelo Nitna Hatraa Ela Lavchin Ben Shogeg LeMezid. Okay, very interesting. Says Rabbi Yossi Chaver. He says a Tamid Chacham does not need Hatraa, does not need warning. Why? Because the point, the purpose of Hatraa is in order Lavchin Ben Shogeg LeMezid. It's in order to establish, to make sure that the person was acting uh, uh, intentionally, willfully, knew, knew what they were doing. The truth is there, there, is, a, there is a dual purpose here of hatra'ah. On the one hand, it's hatra'ah in order that the person should know, should realize that what the act they're about to commit is, that they are committing such an act, and B, to understand that the, uh, the, what, the severity of the act, the punishment that they would get, um, that they would get for it, and um, so he says, hatra'a, uh, generally speaking, a person might be doing it accidentally. They might not realize. They might not know that it's, that it's uh, forbidden. They might not know what they're doing. But if they're a tamin chacham, then we assume that they know, and they know that they're lachot, and they're forces. Rabbi Yossi, not everybody agrees, of course, but Rabbi Yossi says that there would be no hatra'a required there. Um, 
comes out of this as well as something very, very interesting. Um, quite, uh, quite disturbing if you think about it. But Rabbi Yossi says, who doesn't need hatra'a? He says, a chavir. So somebody is a tamid chacham. They can establish the difference between shogeg and mezid on their own. We don't need hatra'a. Who are we talking about in our Mishnah? We're talking about a sone. We're talking about an enemy. So you're talking about a, son, a sone who's a tamid chacham. Just think about that for a moment. This is human nature. Unfortunately, you know, nobody's perfect and we have things and we can, uh, people can make mistakes. So even somebody who's a chaver could be a sonet for somebody else. Again, that's quite a that's quite a frightening concept, and I guess that's you know for us for ourselves to learn our own uh, uh, our own derech Okay. Um, continues continues the Gemara. Rabbi Shimon Omer yesh sonet gole. So Rabbi Shimon says it depends on the circumstance. Sometimes the sonet will go into galut, and sometimes he won't. Okay, so what is the, which circumstance do we say yes? Which do we say no? Tanya. So we we're going to have, again, three, three, line, three lines of Qumran, which are going to be very, very complicated. A lot of, uh, you can see the Rashi just on the side, very, very, very long Rashi about this case we're about to discuss. So hold tight. Um, but we're going to have two Braithot, which, which distinguish between two different cases. And there's going to see, be a seeming contradiction between the two brightot, and we're going to have to resolve them. So it says like this, Tanya, Ketzad, Amar Rabbi Shimon, Yesh Sone Golev, Yesh Eno Gole, Nifsak Gole, Nishmat Eino Gole. Okay, so you remember at the beginning of the, of the para, we had a Mishnah which spoke about the different cases. The Mishnah where we learned about Derech Aliyah and Derech Yerida, Right, it spoke about, for example, somebody who held their, um, you know, this tool which they were smoothing out the roof, and it, what happened if it fell and killed somebody, or what happened if a person was lowering a barrel and a rope, right? And the case that the Gemara gave was that was that it fell, the uh, the rope uh, broke, the rope broke, and the barrel fell and killed somebody. The case in the Mishnah did not talk about was where somebody the rope slipped out of somebody's hand. And we actually said at the time, Tosfot said to us, the reason why the Mishnah does not mention that case is because that case where it slips from your hand is going to be a machloket tanayin. We're going to see it right now, as opposed to the case where the rope broke. Okay, But those are the two scenarios you could have. You could have where somebody is lowering something or holding something. It could slip out of their hand or the implement, the rope, whatever it is, could break and could fall down. So if I'm to ask you now, which one, see, which one is more more uh, accidental. So what we're trying to establish now is if we have a case of a sonne, somebody who there is uh, somewhat circumstantial evidence that this person may be, may not be so upset if somebody else dies, right? What, what is more, so if, some, if you're holding something and it slips out of your hand, it could be that somebody, uh, that, that wasn't so accidental. I said it was an accident, it slipped, I allowed it to slip. If something broke, right, the rope snapped, that's that's that seems to be more of an accidental nature. So says mm-hmm. Rabbi Shimon like this. He says in the uh, uh, in the first writer, he says yes shone gole yes shone she no gole nifsak gole nishmat e no gole. If it breaks, right, the rope snaps. Then we say that is that is accidental, and then they're going to galut. But if it's nishmat, if it fell, if it uh, was released from your hand. So there you could say, remember, we're talking about a sonnet. So we could say, actually, no, that was not an accident. That was somewhat intentional. And therefore, there would not be galut over there. Okay, so that is the first, that is the first writer. That's the distinction Rabbi Shimon makes. Asks the Gemara, wait a minute. V'atanya, haven't we learned in a writer, Rabbi Shimon, the same Rabbi Shimon says, Le'olam eino gole ad shi'ishamet machzalo miyado. Says Rabbi Shimon, there is never galut. Now, at this point, we understand that the second writer is not talking specifically about a sonne. It's talking about anybody. But he says, there will, there, there will never be galut until we say, shamet until the tool uh, slips from his hand. So wait a minute. The first writer said that if we say that it's a nifsak, that it breaks, then there would be galut. But if it's nishmat, if it slips out of the hand, there would not be galut. The second writer says, only if it slips out of the hand, there would be galut. Meaning if it, if it breaks, there would not be galut. So we have a double contradiction, says the, says, says the Gemara. Kasha nifsak nifsak. Kasha nishmat nishmat. 
Right. Both cases are, 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 are in contradiction. If we look at the case of Nifsak, where the rope breaks, according to Brayta number one, uh, um, there is Galut. According to Brayta number two, there is not Galut. If we look at the case of Nishmat, where it slips out of his hand, according to Brayta number one, uh, there is not Galut. According to Brayta two, that is the case where there is Galut. So this is the, this is the contradiction between the two, uh, between the two Brayta. Let's have a look at Rashi. Rashi says Nifsak, um, going back up about uh, five lines down from where Rashi begins uh, uh, explaining the Gemara. It says mm -hmm. Nifsak, Hachever, Vnafal Alav, Ein Lomar, Baladadze. Right, that's in the first writer regarding the, the Sone. We say if the rope snaps and the, the barrel falls on somebody else, we wouldn't say yeah, he did this on purpose. That's an accident. But Nishmat, Hachever, Miado, Vnafal Alav, the rope fell out of slipped out of his hand and fell on somebody else. So we won't there we say no galut for the sonne because maybe he did it on purpose. And then second brighter says, Leolam no gole. Nobody goes into galut for Nifsak, says Rashi, Lo Ohev lo sonne. Whether it's an Ohev or Sonne, whoever it is, but Nifsak, Ella Benishmat. Only in the case of Nishmat, only in the case where the where the um where it's where it slips out of the hand. Um, okay, and then he says machzalo because he says when nishmat machzalo. What what is that talking about? So he says who magela. This is this tool this, uh, which they would use to smooth out the roofs, as we discussed previously. Shepamim shetachin b'machzalim shukli umanut shabonim. This is a tool which the builders use. Again, seemingly it's very heavy, and if it would fall fall on somebody else, it could kill them. Now says Rashi Achi Garcia, and here we have a problem with. The Girsa. If you look at the Girsa of Al Gemara, it says like this: It's going to we're going to resolve essentially both. We need to resolve both contradictions, and the way we do it is um, like this: What we're going to say that the two Brayot are talking about two different things. Answer number one is that we're going to say that one of them is one case is referring to an Ohev, and one case is referring to a Sone, and then we're going to say. That regarding the second contradiction, this is the Machloket Rebbe and Chachamim, which we saw in an earlier Mishnah. But the problem is, which of these, we'll explain in a moment, but which of these uh, answers is going to be for which questions? If you look at Agios of the Gemara, it says, um, it says, Nifsak anifsak lo kasha, ha bohev ha besone, nishmat anishmat lo kasha, ha Rebbe ha Rabbanan. In other words, regarding the question we asked about Nifsak, where something uh, where something broke, right? And we said in one case there is no galut, in the other case there is galut. So one is referring to an ohev and one is referring to a sonet. But if it's nishmat and nishmat, it's a case where it slipped from one's hand, we say that's the machlok at Rebbe and Rabbanan. That is our guess of the, of the Mishnah. Rashi says, and many other Rishonim say as well, that is impossible. That is an incorrect understanding. And Rashi therefore flips the girsa. So he says, the way you have to read it is nishmat and nishmat, that regarding where it slipped from one's hand, that is where we make the distinction between an ohev and a sonne. But where it broke is where we make the distinction between um, um, between the machlok and Rabbi and Rabbanan. He says the other way around it wouldn't work. So let's see. Let's look at Rashi inside and explain how the uh, explain the the answer to the contradiction. So Rashi says hachi garsinan. Nishmat anishmat lo kasha ha bohev ha besone. Right, which, as you can see, is different to Agios in, in the Gemara because Agios is nifsak and nifsak. You know, sometimes you look at Rashi and Rashi will say, Hachi Garcina, you don't understand what he wants because when he has the same gear so that we have in, that we have in the in the Gemara. So there were different manuscripts and there were different um, different kitva yeah, that were going around. And Rashi tells us what the gear is. So when we have the same gear so that Rashi has, uh, then it doesn't make sense. In a case like this, where the girsa that we have here in the Gemara is different, we understand what, what Rashi is saying, what he's arguing about. So he says, nishmat and nishmat. So we said, right, we said, our first Mishnah said that if it's nishmat, the our first Brighter said regarding nishmat, where it slips out of one's hand, where that's an enemy that would not go into Galut. Um, and the second Brighter said that where it slips, only when it slips out of the hand, they would go into Galut. Okay, so we initially understood that the second bright is talking about everybody, you know, heaven a soneh. So now what we're saying is no. First bright is regarding the soneh. Second bright is regarding the ohev. 
So therefore, regarding Nishmat, there's no contradiction. If the rope slips out of your hand, or the slips out of your hand, so if it's an enemy, if it's a sonne, there's no galut. If it's an oev, if it's an ordinary person, there is galut. That's the answer to that contradiction. So, so inside Rashi, nishmat nishmat loka shahab oev hab sonne. Nifsak a nifsak, right? Regarding the fact that it says uh, where the rope breaks, so he says loka shahar rebi harabanan. In other words, there. The first, the first contradiction regarding nishmat, where it slips out of your hand, that is a difference between two cases. In one case, it would be uh, there would be galut. The other case, it would not be galut, based on who it is. The contradiction between nifsak and nifsak in the two uh, brayton regarding when the rope breaks, that is not a difference between cases, but that is a difference between opinions. That is a machloket rishon. That is a machloket tanaim between Rebbe and Rabbanan. Continues Rashi. You see it next to the, there's a, there's a small letter Gimel in brackets. He says, Hadiktani nishmat gole. That which it says that if it's nishmat, if it slips out of your hand, it goes into galot, that's talking about Be'ohev, but an ordinary person who's not an enemy. David midat. We don't suspect that he, that he uh, let go of it on purpose. V'diktani nishmat eno gole. But that which is taught that slips out of the hand, there is no galot, the sonne that is talking about the sonne, the enemy, right? That there in that first bright, I said explicitly that is talking about a sonne. And that is that is how it's uh, how it's explaining. That's why, by the way, Rashi says it, it's not going to make sense to to interpret it the other way. What about the second contradiction where you said nifsak and nifsak? And that is a machlok between Rabbi and Rabbanan. So Rashi continues. Nifsak and nifsak lo kasha, ha Rabbi ve ha Rabbanan. Ha diktani nifsak gole afilu besone ve chol shuken be'oev. So he says like this. That which we say that if, if the rope breaks, the person's going to go into galut. So that is, even if it's a sone, it says that explicitly. And all the more so if it's an ordinary person, if it's an oev, that is Rabbanan. So this is going according to the opinion of Rabbanan and Rabbi Shimon following, following that opinion, right? Where we say that if we said Nishmata Barzel Mikatov Gole, you remember a previous Mishnah we saw what happens when a person is chopping wood in the forest. Okay, person is chopping wood and uh, something goes off and, 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 and somebody gets killed. So we had a machloket between Rabbi and Rabbanan. What is the case over there? One opinion was that if the metal from the axe slips off and, and, uh, and kills somebody, that that would be galut. There was the other opinion was that if it is uh, splinters of wood, when the person is chopping wood, the wood from the tree goes flying in one direction and kills somebody. That was the machloket Rabbi and Rabbanan. Rabbanan, with, Rabbanan said that if it's the metal from the axe that goes, and it was learned out from the psukim. Rabbanan said if it was the metal from the axe that goes off, that would kill somebody. Uh, then there would be galut. Rebbe said no. There would only be galut if it was the wood from the tree that you were chopping that would kill somebody. So the case where here it gets a little bit confusing because the word is nishmat, which means uh, slip off, but that's not what we mean. If the person is chopping and their axe breaks, right, that blade, the metal blade goes and kills somebody else, that is comparable to the case of nifsak. That is comparable to the case where I'm holding a rope and the rope splits in two. I'm chopping with an axe and the axe splits in two and that piece of metal goes flying and kills somebody. So he says nifsak, where it breaks, there we say the person goes into galut. That was the first brighter. It's talking about a sonne. But of course, it would apply to anybody because the sonne, there's, 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 if the sonne is going to go into galut, anyone else would go into galut. So that was the first part to what, what uh, Rabbi Shimon said. That's according to Rabbanan. Rashi again from the beginning of the Tibur Matchel. Ha diktani nifsak gole afilu besonne v'koshiken b'oev. That which we teach that the, the that it breaks that the person is going to go into galut. That's Rabbanan. Valibad Rabbi Shimonu damar nishmat abazal mikatov arag gole. Because he says, if the axe, the, uh, the, it's confusing because he uses the word nishmat, 
but it, but, but it, uh, it's not the nishmat we're talking about here. It means that the axe broke and the blade slipped off the wood and that killed somebody. Then he'd go into galut. Right? The rope breaking in one's hand is the same as he had the axe, the, the metal of the axe slipping off and breaking from, from the rest of the handle. Uh, that he's left holding the handle that he was holding in the first place. That is the first brighter. What about the second brighter? In the second brighter, it says you only have galut where in the shmat, where it slips out of your hand, not where it broke. Well, that is the opinion of Rebbe. Because Rebbe said, if the axe breaks and the metal goes there, that, that's not the case where somebody goes into galut. Um, right, he says this would be comparable to the case of the same as the rope which split in one's hand. It's only if the rope fell out of one's hand or the tool fell out of one's hand and you have nothing left in your hand. And that is similar to the case of where the wood chips, which were never in your hand and aren't in your hand, went off and killed somebody else. That was the case where you're going to Galut, according to, according to Rabbi. Okay, we'll have to stop there. Rashi continues, maybe we'll see it next time. Rashi continues to explain why it has to be that Gersa and it can't be the other way around. But essentially, the, 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 the summary of it is, according to Rabbi Shimon, that there are some situations where the Sunnah goes into Galut and somewhere it does not go into Galut. We said the difference is the case of Nishmat, where the, where the rope or the tool, the implement fell out of one's hand for the Sunnah that would not be Galut because we suspect that he did it on purpose. For the Ohev, it would be Galut. And so that was the question of, nif, of Nishmat. Regarding the question of Nifsak, where the rope breaks or the tool breaks in your hand, that goes back to the Machloket, Rebbe, and Rabbanan, and therefore the first Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbanan, the second, uh, first brighter, second brighter follows the opinion of Rebbe, and therefore there is no contradiction. Yeah. Thank you very much.